Well, hello, hello everyone, and welcome to our webinar on Workday Workouts. I am really, really pleased to be here on behalf of Anthem, who is your employee assistance program, and um, I will give you all the information about how to contact them at the end, all right? My name is Diane Fully Blank, and I'm going to give you just a little bit about me. Um, <clears throat> I think you have like a, a little little picture of me in the corner or in the front or in the top or something. So um, hopefully you're, you're able to see me because we're going to be doing a bunch of things that are not just sitting down. So I am an exercise physiologist by profession. Um, I'm certified by the American Council um, of Sports Medicine and at, as an exercise physiologist. I've been in the health and wellness field for, I always, always hate to say this, but it's been over 25 years. Mm. Mm. During that time, I've had the pleasure of having a lot of different um, job responsibilities. I have worked in corporate fitness. I've been a personal training director. I've been a group exercise director. I was also general manager of a very large um, multi-sport health club in Westchester County. Um, I had the privilege of being an associate professor at Barnard College in Manhattan and uh, a continuing education provider for um, fitness certification organizations. And I now love being able to give presentations on um, health, wellness, and a bunch of business topics um, through Anthem. So these are our objectives for today. First of all, I'm going to ask you a question and I would love it if you would please answer me. We all know that it's really, really important Ah, it's got a question. I'd like to um, information on how to relieve lower back stiffness. All right, we'll do a, a little bit of that later. Okay. Um, we all know how really, really important it is to be physically fit, right? I don't think that that's new to anybody. It's all it's all over the the web and the, and the newspapers and the media all the time, right? How many of you made New Year's resolutions? that would say, I'm going to get more fit, I'm going to get more active, I'm going to change my lifestyle, I'm going to eat better, anything like that. Anybody? Yes, no? Maybe? Yes, good, I got one. A bunch of yeses. Another no, a big capital letter no. All right, are you still doing it? Are you still keeping to your resolution? Because January 22nd is known as resolution breaking day because down 16 pounds, congratulations, excellent, yay, yay, that, that needs applause, fabulous. But most people, sort of get rid of their resolutions by January 22nd. And that's kind of late. A lot of people say it's oh, really the second week of January. So, so if you're still doing it, congratulations. If not, hopefully what you're gonna do is get a little bit of um, excitement towards getting a little bit more into being active, being fit, you know, doing something on a daily basis, all right? And I know we all lead extraordinarily busy lives, even during COVID, even during this pandemic, right? And it's, it's I know so many people who said, oh, well, you know, I'm working from home now, so um, I'm sure I'm going to have more time to be able to do the things that I want to be doing, like uh, getting more physically fit and getting out there and doing a class here and doing a class there, and almost all of them have just, that's just kind of fallen by the wayside. All right. So I'm thinking that you're probably here because you want a little bit more information Am I right about how you can do things, how you can um, actually keep going with the with the uh, resolutions that you might have made before? So let's. But what we're going to do, I'm going to give you a little rundown of, of how we're going to structure this next uh, little less than an hour now. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit. I can talk about this forever, but I'm going to talk a little bit. 
I'm going to, um, we're going to actually do some things. Like in just a second, we're going to do some things. We're and um, I'm going to talk a little bit more, and then um, and then I will answer all your questions. So what I want you to do right now, right now, okay? Put your hands on your desk or your table or wherever you are. Push your chair back, and I want you to stand up. Everybody, stand up. I'm going to move this so that you can see me. So. All I want you to do is put your feet a little hip width apart, maybe a little bit more, okay? First of all, relax your shoulders down. Now take your hands onto your shoulders and then lift them up in a great big V and look all the way up as far as you can and stretch up and up. And now take in three big deep breaths in. So inhale and out. Inhale and out. Inhale and out. And now bring your hands down. I hope you did that with me. I'm going to go back. You can go back and sit down. I'm going to pull my chair back because it went quite a ways away. There we go. Okay. Now that is what's called a power pose. And what it does is it gives you energy. It gives you energy. So I fully, absolutely, highly recommend i'm going to give you some recommendations but this is my first one do that every morning before you start your work day so if you are going to go open up your computer you're going to sit down before you sit down do that power pose it's going to give you energy and you're going to feel really really good so let's talk about why exercise Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's a pretty basic question, right? Why bother in the first place? Well, it's been shown time and time and time again that the way that you're going to get healthy and the way that you're going to feel better is to exercise and eat well, right? That's the key. Those are the keys. Okay. It reduces your risk of, of getting so many diseases it can it can make you stronger it won't it won't make you not get sick but it will make you less likely to get ill as even covid even covid okay so let's take these are you know become better physically mentally and injury and disease prevention so we're going to take a look at each one of these so the physical benefits, hmm. I love this. It's going to increase your sturdiness. That's a great word, right? It's going to increase your sturdiness. And no one's going to deny that it's just as plain going to make you stronger, right? You're going to get stronger. But in addition, what's going to happen is you're going to look better. You're going to look better because the more you exercise, and, and watch your diet, the more you are going to increase your muscle mass, your lean body mass, and decrease the amount of fat that you have on your body. We need some fat, we absolutely do, but you want to, to make your muscles as strong as possible. And we're going to go over that. And it says it will improve your posture. And I'm going to give you a little demonstration and you can do it with me if you want. Okay, when you stand up and you have your hands so that they're, they're facing backwards, okay, what do you do? Your shoulders tend to roll slightly forward, right? So as you strengthen across your chest, you strengthen your arms, if you just roll your hands forward, you immediately stand up taller. You stand up stronger, more, your posture improves, right? And if you don't do it for any other, other reason at all, it's gonna make you look younger. People with better posture just plain look younger, okay? And it's going to make you less prone to the risk of getting certain kinds of diseases. So, the other thing that it does to you 
No, I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. All right. Let's talk about the mental benefits of it. The mental benefits. Ah, have you, and I'm sure you have, felt foggy brain, especially right now? You know, you feel foggy brain, you know, like you can't really think or you're working on something and you can't get it and you're just kind of in a, in a fuddle and a muddle and everything. And you go outside and you go for a walk. What happens? What happens when you go outside and you go for a walk? Anybody? Don't you feel better? Doesn't that make you feel better? What exercising does, and it's an, uh, it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. Oh, by the way, what I forgot to say is if you put something into the chat room, it only comes to me. Um, so nobody knows what you're saying. All right, and I don't use any names. So please feel free to say whatever you would like to say in the chat room, please. Okay. <sighs> what happens? It releases stress and anxiety. Absolutely. Absolutely. Makes you happier. How does it do that? A nice, brisk walk always clears my head. Thank you. Yes, it really does, especially if you're able to do it outside, right? Doesn't matter what the weather is, just get outside and do it. And what happens is your body releases endorphins. And what are endorphins? Endorphins are natural pain relievers, okay? It also releases some hormones. So it releases dopamine, which is ah that feel good hormone right and what does dopamine do for you it aids in learning it aids in memory it aids in um in making your motor systems work better dopamine is a wonderful wonderful hormone that your body releases when you exercise when you exercise and then oxytocin your body also releases oxytocin and that is um what's called the love hormone, okay? Because it makes you feel really, really good. It really does. And this, this says improves your memory, improves your focus. These hormones are what actually does it. And then serotonin, you probably have heard, serotonin's been in the news a lot recently um, because what serotonin is, is it's a mood regulator. And it actually, a lot of serotonin is, um, is released from your gut and then it goes through your whole body. Okay, and it affects your, your serotonin productions, affect your sleep, affect your appetite, um, affect your digestion, makes you learn better. It's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. And then, and then the really, really nice thing is you just become a nicer person to be around. And when you're a nicer person to be around, your personal and your work relationships improve, right? Lots to think about, lots to think about. So those are some of the mental benefits that you actually get from just plain working out, going for a walk, doing something, just doing something, okay? All right, and, and it can change your life positively if you do it often, do it correctly, do it with a great attitude. In other words, don't go, eh, I got to exercise today and I really don't want it. I don't want to get out of bed. We whine a lot about exercise sometimes. Okay, we're going to talk about that. And if you also keep track of your progress, we're going to talk about each one of these individually. So how often should you exercise? So this says most days of the week. Okay. Um, I agree with that. So your goal should be to try to exercise or be more physically active um, pretty much every single day. All right. And I'm going to give a quick clarification between the difference between physical activity and exercise. Okay. Physical activity is anything anything at all that you do that is not sitting or lying down all right anything so it's a whole bunch of things that you just 
automatically do within your day. It's things like shopping or even doing housework or playing, playing with your kids or your grandkids or your nieces or your nephew or, or your dog, playing with your dog, taking your dog for a walk, you know, playing with your kitty cat if you're not sitting down. Do it standing up, okay? Um, dancing, dancing is wonderful. I actually firmly believe that you should start your day. This is another little tip I'm going to give you besides the power pose. Um, dance, dance for a couple of minutes every morning before you start your day. Get your heart going, get your body going, and you feel really good, especially when you do it to music that you absolutely adore. Okay, the more you move, the more positive impact you're going to have on your health. And then this is 20 minutes to two hours per, as that should just say per day, not per days. Um, sometimes you want to do a, a really short workout. Some days you want to actually get out and do a whole bunch. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit later. And then every single day, every single day, you want to get up, you want to get out, you want to do something, do something. And there's a whole bunch of things that you can do, and we'll go over some of them. If you have any ideas about the kinds of things that you do, that you would like to do, that you would like to share, I love it when people share with me. So please, please put them into the, into the chat box, okay? All right, and this is be active every day. Get up, mow your lawn. And it says, go out for a night of dancing. Wouldn't that be nice to be able to do? Maybe in a while, maybe in a while. Right now, we really can't, but um, maybe in a little while, okay? But you can always uh, walk my dogs. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, that's what I do too, you know? That's the wonderful thing about dogs. You know, you gotta get out and walk them because they need it, right? Um, but dance in your kitchen. As, you, as you're making dinner, as you're doing something, even as you're cleaning up, put on eh, loud music. I, I suggest loud music um, and music that you like to dance to. And just dance, dance all by yourself if you want to. Dance with your dog, dance with your kids, dance with your partner, dance, just dance. And that is one of the best exercises that you are going to do, okay? And then exercise correctly. And as with almost anything that you want to do correctly, that you want to do right, okay, it's so important to exercise in the right way. I'm sure you've heard of a lot of people who have been injured through exercise and you go, oh, I don't want that to happen to me. I have fitness professionals I know who have been injured through exercise because they haven't done it correctly. All right. I know people who have worked out with trainers and their trainers have not trained them correctly and they have ended up with knee injuries or shoulder injuries. All right. So you have to do it correctly. You have to know what you're doing. And so you need to get somebody that you trust and somebody that is going to guide you the right way. Okay. Because you don't want to injure yourself. If you injure yourself, you stop. Right. Um, so knowing what is your proper form, knowing what the proper intensity is for you, knowing how to do it properly. I will, I always recommend a mirror or even a window. You know, you can see yourself in a window sometimes. Even a window is really, really good. But that's really, really, really important. A good coach, a good trainer. Um, there are really great uh, videos now that are free if you just Google. Um, free exercise videos. There are a lot of, of instructional exercise videos that actually show you how to do things properly for, for the level that you are at, okay? There's YouTube videos. There's all kinds of things. This is books, magazines, apps, DVDs. Just learn the proper way to exercise. And you don't need to be perfect. And if you've heard that, you know, um, oh, you have to exercise for uh, 45 minutes to an hour to get any, any benefit out of your cardio exercise. No, no, you don't need to be perfect. You need to aim for progress. 
that's really, really important. And then just make sure that you have the right equipment. All right, so you probably don't want to be exercising in your stilettos. I've seen people try it. I've also seen people try to do cardio in their bare feet or their stocking feet and they've slipped and they've fallen. So you have to make sure that you've got the right equipment, all right? That you've got, um, if you're going to be lifting and, and you want to get some weight lifting gloves, that's a really, really good thing to do. Sometimes, depending on how much you're going to be lifting, if you're going to try to be lifting heavy, right? You want your wrist straps, you want anything. Sometimes, sometimes um, a, a belt, um, a, a weight belt is a very, very good thing to have. For other people, it impedes them, but you have to do that for yourself, okay? Uh, your exercise clothes, your proper shoes. Um, for women, a good sports bra, okay? Things that are going to make it so that your exercise is going to give you the best benefit absolutely possible. Okay, if there's any questions on that, any questions on um, form, using proper exercise equipment, anything like that, please go ahead, just come into that chat box. I would love it. Thank you. All right, and then attitude. What's on here? The first two are kind of negative. And I happen to think that um, the attitude that you that you take towards exercise, if you say, this is going to be great, this is going to make me feel good. I'm going to give you an example from myself. Um, when I was in uh, college, I swam, okay? I would go from, from the campus to the pool, and you know what? I didn't like to swim. I really didn't like to swim. And I would start and I would go, okay, I don't, don't know that I really want to be doing this. It's the middle of winter. I lived in Alberta in a very cold place. It was very cold. But I would go to the pool every day and I would say, okay, I know that I'm going to feel better when I get out. And I would get in the pool and I would do my laps and I would do like 50 laps or 60 laps and get out and go, ah, that feels good. That can be how, what you decide in advance, that it's going to make you feel good, okay? And then don't be like me. I, I swam because that happened to be what was available at the time, right? But just choose things that you like, things that you're going to like. Walking is a wonderful exercise, wonderful, brisk, brisk walking, and it makes, it clears your head, it makes you feel so good, and it can be a walking meditation too. Walking is, is really considered to be a meditation. Maybe you really enjoy doing yoga, maybe you really enjoy doing cardio, that's my thing right now. I happen to really, really enjoy doing cardio, you know, so I don't necessarily want to do a lot of weights. I do them, but I don't necessarily want to be doing them as much as I want to be doing cardio. But I do my cardio and I say, okay, I've done what I like, and then I'm going to go on to what I don't like so much, okay? And then don't forget, keep your end goal in mind, all right? Nothing else is going to do you as much good as exercise is, all right? Even if you're only exercising because you want to look better, you're going to reap those residual effects, those residual benefits of a healthier heart and stronger muscles and better, uh, you know, better uh, lean to fat ratios, um, better posture. You're going to get all of those, even if the only reason that you're exercising is to look better, okay? Reaching your goal is absolutely, absolutely worth the effort, okay? So then what about setting attainable goals? Because what happens so often, and especially with people who set New Year's resolutions, you know, they say, okay, now it's December 31st. So starting tomorrow, January 1st, I'm going to run five miles a day. Well, if you've never run before, you're probably not going to do it, right? You're probably not going to have that incentive to go ahead and do it. Figure out your why. 
figure out why. What do you want to accomplish? Okay. As I said, if you've never run, if you decide that you're going to uh, run a marathon in three months, you're not going to get there. All right. Why are you undertaking this exercise program? Do you want to lose weight? Do you want to become more flexible? Do you want to increase your sense of balance? We're going to talk about balance in just a little bit. Do you just want to look better and feel better? You want to make your heart better? Figure out your why. Decide why. I think that's the important thing with most things in life is to start with why. Okay. Um, the key is to start. The key is to really start with your current fitness level. Start with your current fitness level and go from there. So if you if you're thinking that, oh, well, you know, I what I really want to do is, as I said, run a marathon. If you if you've never if you're overweight and you've never run before, I don't know if you ever saw the movie um, Brittany Runs a Marathon. It is so motivational. It's really really good. It's a true story, and it gives you hope that if that's what your ultimate goal is that you can do it too so i would absolutely recommend that movie Brittany runs a marathon fabulous fabulous it's on i believe netflix i think it's on netflix um but if, if you just do an internet search for it you can probably find it and then don't forget to track your progress don't forget to track your progress because if you set a goal and you don't track your progress and you're not getting any closer to it, you just go, oh, forget that one, right? I don't want to be doing that. As it says here, if you're not getting closer, reevaluate your plan. Maybe your plan is incorrect for you. Okay. Now let's talk about exercising on company time. Yay. Yay. Everybody goes, oh, yeah, that's right. Exercise on company time. That's never going to happen. But it actually does. And I have had, especially in the last year since we've been um, working from home, right? I've had a lot of managers ask me, what can I do? What can I do? And if you are a manager or you can talk to your manager and suggest this, you can do some exercises during your Zoom calls, during your whatever you use, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, uh, whatever it is. You can do some exercises. I have actually set up programs for managers to say, OK, you know, discuss this and then you're going to do some standing up. Oh, let's stand up. That's what we're going to do every 20 to 30 minutes and we've been on this for 28 minutes now so everybody stand up i want everybody to stand up there's a whole bunch of things that you can do a whole bunch of things that you can do you can do them during your meetings and i've had um other people say that during their their one-on-one -on -one meetings they say okay you know yeah let's do some push-ups do some desk push-ups so here we go everybody you're going to uh, I just got the movie is on Amazon Prime. Great. Watch it. Watch it. Now, push your chair back as far as you can get it. Put your hands on your desk. I'm going to move my little camera here so you can see maybe a little bit. Put your hands on your desk so that they're flat and about shoulder width apart. First of all, start with straight elbows. And now I'm going to come really close to you so don't get scared. But you're just going to bend down, bend your elbows, and come back up again and bend your elbows and come back up again. You're doing push-ups. Bend your elbows and come back up again. And again, down and up and down and up. How are you feeling? Down and up and down and up. And now we're going to do something else that's kind of, that you just might want to do by yourself, but Leaving your hands right where they are, all you're going to do is you're going to do a desk plank. Planks are wonderful. You're going to come down to your desk, pull in your abs, keep your shoulders nice and wide, and stay there. Stay there. Stay there. You're just doing a plank. Stay there. 
stay there. I'm going to push you back up again because we need to get going. Stay there for as long as you possibly can. You can do it against the wall also. Maybe there's a wall, all right, for your plank, you go back, and then you just come forward and stay right there and stay and stay and stay for as long as you can. All right, you, a plank works so much. It works your abs, it works your back, it works your shoulders. And for the person who has a sore back, that is probably a standing plank is probably a very, very good thing for you to be doing. Okay, we're going to do a few more things while we're standing up because it's a good thing to do. All right, so um, what about some squats? Have you, have you tried squats? So I don't know if you can see me here. All you're going to do, hips are about, uh, feet are about hip width apart, and you're going to just squat down by bending your knees and then come back up again. Make your abs work with you. All right, you don't have to pull them in really, really tight, but help, but make them work with you and they'll help you. So squat down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up now let's try a lunge all you do is you put one foot forward one foot back and you're going to lunge down and come back up see there's some and hold on to your desk if you want i am and come up and down and up if we do one leg we have to do the other one or else we end up walking in circles all day because one is stronger than the other Bend down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up. Now shake it all out. Okay. Um, while we're here, we're just going to do a couple of little stretches. So what I want you to do now, I'm going to get back so you can maybe see me. Take a little big deep breath in and exhale. But now relax your shoulders, shake them, shake your hands, shake your legs, shake everything, get it all loosened up, okay? And then I want you to take your hands up and bend over to one side. All right, I'm bending to my right. So what I want you to do, if you're bending to your right, take your left shoulder and pull it forward just a little bit because we tend to push our shoulders back when we do this and come up if you have shoulder issues you can put your hands behind your head on your shoulders and do the same thing just bend over you're stretching all through here because we sit so much now pull that other that shoulder forward just a little bit okay all right and now another one that we're going to do everybody always goes oh my shoulders get so tight my shoulders get so tight. All right. Well, yes, they do. And that's because what you're doing is you're over a computer all day, right? What happens? Your shoulders come in, your shoulder, um, your, your shoulder joints are coming in, right? You're typing on your computer. Your head's probably down like this, unless you've actually thought about where you've got everything, um, everything uh, situated on your desk, okay? And then people go, oh, my shoulders get so sore. They do. And then what do they do? They do this. You, you're just stretching a muscle that has already been overstretched, right? So what I want you to do instead, as soon as you think that that's the movement that you want to do, instead, I'm going to turn around, hopefully you can see me, take your hands, place them right down as close to your butt as you can get them. Now. You're going to think about making the space between your shoulders as broad as you can. You don't want to push back, but you want to make this space nice and broad. So now make that broad and then just lift up your hands. Lift up your hands and hold it. And that is what's going to help you get your shoulders so that they're not going to hurt as much. Ah, and just keep breathing and then take your hands very slowly down and give them a shake out. 
Okay, how does that feel? How does that feel? Another one that we're going to do right now is uh, what happens to an awful lot of people is right here. This part of your hand gets very tight because you're typing. You're typing all the time, right? Like this. And so you're contracting these muscles right here. So instead, what you're going to do, and hopefully you can see, ah, oh, you can. Put your hands on your desk. Spread your fingers as wide as you can. All right, you're still standing up. Now, very gently bend your elbows and press into your hands. And that stretches out that particular part of your hand, which gets so contracted all the time. Great. All right. Now, come back up again. Shake them out. Shake them out. And what people tend to do is this, this stretch to stretch your hands, it doesn't get right here. It gets the rest of, of your palm, absolutely, and then this way. So go ahead and do those two. And then you stretch up this here and stretch down here. All right, and then shake them out. Okay, all right. Now, I think that's all that we're going to do for right now. We'll do a little bit more towards the end. Okay, what about some little common sense things? Just be active. So just be active all the time. Okay, you might, um, if you, if you possibly can, um, I don't know if you spend much time on the phone, like not on, on Zoom, but on the phone. So if you're on the phone, like this, okay walk walk i actually was giving this presentation to another company and somebody typed in the in the um, chat box i'm walking during this whole presentation so thank you yes absolutely just walk just walk somebody else um said that they have a, a little um it's a it's a foot bike that they put underneath their desk and they've got that and that gets them gets their legs going all right standing up is the best thing that you're possibly going to be able to do for yourself okay another thing that you can always do is to just put things that you need during your work day all right in places that you have to stand up to get them so if you've got if you need a stapler or a piece of paper or a book or something don't have it on your desk Okay, have someplace else where you have to stand up and either reach for it or you have to go walk someplace for it. Okay, you have to go over to the bookshelf or, or something like that. Get up, get up. Um, and, ah, yes, and someone just said, uh, tries to send it frequently during Zoom meetings with video off. Try suggesting to whoever you're doing your Zoom meeting with that everybody get up all at once. We'll talk it over with your manager first. Okay, but I think it's a really, really good idea to do that. Okay, fabulous, fabulous. Okay, um, another thing. Um, oh, you can always switch out your desk chair. You know, this this rolly chair that you have that's probably pretty comfortable um, for an exercise ball. Don't have to be on it all the time. They actually have chairs that. Um, that are like they, they hold an exercise ball, but what an exercise ball does is it it makes you move all the time. So your, your muscles are constantly moving, okay? Uh, let me see, what else, what else? A straight back wooden chair, that can also be um, quite an incentive to get up a lot. Doesn't have to happen, all, you know, you don't have to have it all the time, but if you have like a, straight back wooden chair, it's really not very comfortable. And so you're going to end up standing up. You're going to end up standing up quite a bit. Okay. It's wonderful. It's it's wonderful. Just all whatever you can think of that's going to get you up out of your chair all the time. As much as just as much as possible. Okay. Other ideas, I would love them. I would love them. Okay. Um, I know that probably a lot of you have um, have lawns that you mow. I hope that you're using a push mower 
and not a gas mower or an electric mower. Use a push mower. It's really good. I, I know um, I talked to somebody and he bought a house. He moved from the city, moved into um, like not very far from me. He bought a house, first house he'd ever bought. And it was, uh, it was on the corner lot. And it, there was a stop sign right at the corner. And, uh, and he had a lawn and he said, oh, well, I'm going to get a push mower. And I'm going to mow my lawn. Okay. And so he did. And he said, people would stop and say, what is that? What are you doing? What is that? And on top of that, you know, the old Huck Finn thing, <clears throat> they asked if they could, could try it. So he got his, he said, it kind of took away my reason for having it, but I got my lawn mode all the time. Okay, just some little things, some little things. Other things that you can do that are, I think, really, really good suggestions, and that is, um, you know, if you watch TV, if you watch like network TV and there are commercials, okay, you don't necessarily want to watch the commercials. Stand up during the commercials. Don't go to the fridge. Stand up. And do some lunges, do some squats, or you might even want to get down on the floor and do some rollbacks. I don't recommend sit-ups. They're not really great exercises. They work your hip flexors much more than they work your abs and they're hard on your neck. But if you just do some like rollbacks, so you just are rolling back onto the floor or as close to the floor as you can get, and then coming back up, for the person with um, back issues, this is something that you might want to try. Um, even on your bed, so it's a little bit softer, you just you just put your hands out or put your hands underneath your thighs and you just roll back to try to get at least um, the last vertebra on the of, on your of your spine on the ground and then you come back up again. Fabulous ab exercise. And also because if you're contracting your abs, you're stretching your back, right? So you, you're going to actually um, end up stretching your back a little bit too. And the more that you um, get your abs strong, the less back pain you're going to have. All right. I hope that that helps just a little bit. Okay. All right. All right. Let's move on. Eating. Eating. I don't think anybody needs to be told about how to eat properly. You all live in California. You are, you are like the healthiest eaters in the world, right? That's what we in the East get told all the time. Okay. <clears throat> it says there, eighty percent of of weight management is as diet. Okay. And you've probably heard a lot, especially recently, that you're not going to lose weight if all you do is exercise. And that's very true. The ex, you know, it's exercise, it's diet modification, and it's behavior modification. That is what will um, help you to lose the body fat that you wanna be losing, okay? This says five minutes to eat 500 calories takes two hours to burn it off. That's for like the average person, but it's probably really true, probably really true. And junk food junk food you know we all especially now we're, we have um i don't know about you we have i i have snack drawers uh not snack drawers but plural i have a, a snack drawer other people i know have snack baskets and they're not necessarily the healthiest things not necessarily the healthiest things so the key is to keep the junk food away you don't it's not like you can't ever have it but make it a little, 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 tiny portion of what you eat, okay? A little, little, tiny portion, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. The key is to eat a healthy diet full of whole, real foods. So you want to keep processed foods to a minimum, eliminate them if at all possible. Eliminate processed foods. You want to watch your sugar intake. Read your labels because, you know, your labels are going to tell you how much sugar is, is in whatever product it is that you're going to pick up or, or that you're contemplating buying. And it has, um, usually it's got total sugars and then it's, they're doing it now. Most companies are putting in added sugars because there's natural sugars and there's added sugars. So the sugars that come from eating an apple or eating a pear 
that's actually really good stuff. It's not that the sugars aren't all that good, but the rest of it is. But the rest of it is, and the sugars are okay. They're naturally occurring sugars. It's the added sugars that you want to be really careful of. You also want to watch your salt intake. Watch how much sodium is is uh, is in whatever you're eating. And last one, drink plenty of water. Water all the time. Okay. Stay away from the sodas, stay away from the carbonated drinks. Seltzer waters, plain seltzer waters, if you have like a soda stream or, or something that you can make your own seltzer water with, um, they're really good. But don't rely on, um, you know, diet sodas or anything like that. Okay. All right. All right. Now, a well-rounded workout plan is cardio, strength, flexibility. And I love that they have in here balance. Most places don't put balance in theirs. So cardio, you know what cardio is, right? It says should make you huff and puff, not necessarily, okay? Cardiovascular training is any exercise, any movement that raises your heart rate and causes you to use at least a little bit more oxygen. All right, and that's where the huff and puff comes in, but you don't have to huff and puff. My, my guideline always is, uh, it's called a talk test. And a talk test is if, you, if you're exercising cardiovascularly and you can talk, not necessarily fluently, or you, know, you, you might have to take a couple of extra breaths, but not a lot. You're, you're working at a good level. You're working at a good level, all right? If you can't talk, you are exercising too hard. If you're going <gasps> and gasping and huffing and puffing and trying to, trying to get air in, all right? You're exercising too hard and you probably want to just cut back a little bit. And if you can sing or if you can whistle, pick up that pace. It's time to pick up the pace, okay? And do it just a little bit harder, just a little bit harder, okay? It says aim for 15 to 60 minutes during any given workout. That's that's ideal, absolutely. If you can't get that in, um, there was a great article in the New York Times just this past weekend, I think it was this weekend, and it talked about exercise snacks. And my husband looked at it and said, oh, yay, we get the snack during, we, during our exercises. And I said, no, 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 that's not what that is. An exercise snack, is akin to a snack between meals. So you have your meals that you have, and then in between you might have a snack. So, it, but that's a little, a little, little thing, right? So exercise snacks means doing something like we were just talking about, doing something, um, walking during a Zoom meeting, doing some, some, uh, some kind of exercise during commercials, you know, um, taking just a little, a little five minute walk. Those are called exercise snacks and they actually really do add up. They add up. The national goal is um, to get 30 minutes of uh, physical activity each and every day. And every minute counts. It doesn't have to be a specific um, 30 minute workout, okay? The next, the other guideline is that uh, the American College of Sports Medicine's guideline is to um, exercise cardiovascularly or aerobically um, for 150 minutes a week of moderate exercise. So that's 30 minutes a day for five minutes, for five days in a week, right? And then you take a couple of days off or 75 minutes of vigorous exercise in a week. This is in a week, all right? So you can combine the two and you can do maybe, uh, so instead of 150 minutes or, or 75 minutes, you do 90 minutes, some, some at a moderate level, some at a vigorous level, whatever it is that you want to do, but you want to, to try to do it a minimum of five days a week, okay? The other thing is they have, a lot of studies have shown that exercising, especially exercising cardiovascularly vigorously for more than 60 minutes, um, doesn't achieve any greater benefits than exercising for 60 minutes. So that's good to know. You know, you don't have to do two hours of cardio. You can do 60 minutes or you can do 45 minutes. All right. And it's anything. Running, cycling, swimming, dancing. Again, it's that dancing in the kitchen. Exercise snack, dancing in the kitchen. Okay. 
do what you like to do. And then strength training. Strength training is making your muscles stronger. That's really, really what it is. It is, um, I'm gonna read this, it's from the ACSM, is a form of physical activity that's designed to improve muscular fitness by exercising a muscle or a muscle group against external resistance. So it's against external resistance. So when we when we did our, our little push-ups on the, on the desk, that's your resistance, you're using gravity as your resistance there, all right? You can do anything. You can do um, weights, bowls, um, bands, kettlebells, anything like that, whatever it is that you like to do. It says, should make you grunt. Up for grabs as to whether you have to grunt because if you're grunting, you are actually exerting a lot of, of air and a lot of oxygen. So what I really recommend is that you do the number of reps that's going to allow your muscles to get um, fatigued so you can't do another repetition without breaking form, without making your form go bad, okay? So I don't necessarily think that you have to grunt, but you need to make your muscles Okay, and then with um, with strength training, it's really recommended that you don't exercise uh, the same muscle group two days in a row because they do need a little bit of um, of um, rest. All right, they they need to repair themselves. Okay, if you have questions about those kinds of things, please put them in. Put them in. Flexibility, stretching, and this one says should make you wince. Okay, I have to disagree with that one too. You should feel a mild stretch all right and then feel just a little and then go just a little bit beyond that all right you it shouldn't ever hurt jane fonda back in 1983 i think it was that was like almost 50 years ago said oh no 40 years ago said uh i was 73 sorry 73 so it was 50 years ago said no pain no gain wrong absolutely wrong you don't want to hurt yourself you don't want to make your, your muscles so sore that you can't walk the next day and a lot of people overstretch, and that's what happens so you want to do your stretching so that you feel a mild tension in whatever muscle it is that you're stretching so you know when we did when we did the one where we did it like this you only want to feel a mild tension in your shoulders here you don't want to have to go, you can make that make that wincing sound okay don't do that don't do that okay but what stretching is going to do it's going to allow you to remain flexible as you age and that's really 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 important as you age because you want to be able to play with your kids your grandkids whatever right so keep it make your muscles your joints as flexible as possible. The definition that I love of flexibility is the ability to bend without breaking. Okay, I love that. All right, and then balance. Balance is something that we forget about and we just don't do balanced training. And especially as we age, our balance tends to go. Our vestibular system gets a little bit weaker, a little bit weaker. You know and it's harder it's harder to maintain balance but if you work on it you absolutely can get your balance better and that will mean if you're on a bus or a subway or you're on um, an, an unstable surface and something happens and you and you fall and oh no and you and you feel like you're going to fall you're able to not fall and pick yourself back up again Okay, so stand up again. It's about enough time that we need to stand up again. Okay, so what you're going to do is, if you want to put your hands on your on your desk, by all means do. Relax your shoulders. Get those, get that, get that out. Those abs just a little bit, um, not really tight, but you know, they're going to help you here. And all I want you to do is. First of all, shift your weight from your right foot to your left foot, okay? 
and then lift up your right leg. You can hold on if you want, lift up your right leg. You may feel that your foot is doing this. Oh, and that's all those little um, motor sensors trying to say, okay, I got to keep this person up. I got to keep this person up and just hold it there. Okay. And then put it down and then go over to the other side and lift that leg up, lift it up and hold it. You may find this is much easier on one side than on another, than on the other. So you might want to do it more on one side than you do on other on the other side, okay? All right, another one that you can do, if you wanna put your hands on your, on your desk, by all means do, just lift up onto your toes, lift up, lift up, lift up, lift up, and stay there. That's working on your balance. As we're doing this, just stay here. Um, you can use equipment like balance balls or basu balls, which is a both side up ball. That's what basu means. Um, it's it's uh, flat plastic on one side and then it's like a, a balance ball on the top side and you can use those or balance pads or whatever, okay? Another thing that I suggest is when you're brushing your teeth, you can sit down now if you want. I'm going to give you some suggestions. When you're brushing your teeth, stand on one foot. Stand on one foot. If any of you are golfers, one of the big things that will improve your golf game is to improve your balance. Or actually tennis. I was just thinking about that too. Tennis is, is another one. If you improve your balance. but so, so if you get like a golf club, and you stand on one foot, like you can stay seated if you want, you can stand up with me if you want. You just stand on one foot and you get your golf club and you swing it back and forth like this. And then change hands and swing it on the other side. My foot is lifting up, I promise. You can tell because I'm a little bit wobbly there, right? So that is going to improve your game. I will guarantee it. I will guarantee it. For tennis, work on your balance because you know that, that, that you have to have your, your, your body balanced when you, when you start, right? When, when you're at the baseline and, you, and then when you, when you have to be able to get going. If you don't have balance, you fall over and you don't want to be doing that. Okay. All right. That's enough preaching from me, I think. If you have anything that you do for balance, Please, please, please let me know, okay? All right, work some workstation stretches. We did some of this. Um, this session is being recorded. Yes, it is, absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, stand and reach, we did that. Neck stretches. Best thing to do is, is while you're standing up. So if you wanna do them with me, I know we're almost out of time. Um, as she's doing on the, on the um, screen there, Put your hands behind your head, your, your back, interlace your fingers, and just take your ear over to one shoulder because that feels really, really good. And then take your chin down to your chest and then over to the other shoulder. It's ear to shoulder, ear to shoulder. Okay, and that just stretches out all these muscles. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. And then this is um, the one that they're doing here. It, it, it's a, it says a sitting hip stretch. She's standing up. Okay. The one on the purple mat. If you want to do it sitting, do the exact same position that she's in. Put your foot on your knee, hands on your hips or wherever, and just lean forward and you're going to stretch out through your hips. Okay, and that can also help to stretch your back. All right, stretch your back too. Do it on both sides. Okay, that's wonderful. Shoulder stretch we already did. The calf stretch is just, you know, with one foot forward, one foot back. It's in a lunge position. You can be up against a wall or not. And then you just keep your, keep your back heel on the floor and you're going to bend your front knee so that you're stretching out your calf. Especially as we age, and especially women, we tend to um, get weak calves 
very, very weak calves. And then that's when we get all of these um, calf cramps, right? Okay, all right. You guys have been great. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. This is uh, being presented to you by your Anthem EAP. If you have not gone onto the website, it's right there, anthemeap.com. Your login is S-I-S-C, and then it will take you through it there. There is a ton of things that's on there. A ton of things. There's um, you, questions on uh, all kinds of lifestyle issues, everything from, uh, oh my gosh, I just got a brand new puppy and I do not know what to do, right up to, um, oh, my parents are suffering from dementia and I need some help. There's a lot, of, a lot of stuff, um, of stress management, depression management, everything like that. All right, so take a look at it. All right, please, if you haven't before, it's free. It's confidential. It is a benefit. All right. And do you have any questions? Any questions? I'm going to 